I'm very sorry, but it is extremely immoral of United States and the West to incite the Ukrainians to fight and then say, we will not come to your rescue. We will just put economic sanctions. We will, now they have said they will give, uh, you know, Stinger missiles and uh, Javelin uh, anti-tank guided missiles, which are totally defensive weapons, right? They are totally defensive weapons. So with this, it is too little, too late. There is a war on. From where will these weapons go in? They can't go in by the seaports. Uh, Russia has got all three. Sevastopol is in Crimea. Mariupol, they are sitting there. Odessa, they are sitting there. It can't come by the air. Their S-400, S-500 missiles will knock it out of the air, right? It can only come by the ground route. And it is, once it is inside Ukraine, it is open to bombing. So all this is just brave talk to try the Western aim seems to be to extend the war out for a month, for months, if not till the end of this year. Please understand that will devastate the global economy, which is recovering from the COVID uh, pr uh, crisis, right? The price of oil has already reached $100 a barrel. It is likely to go through the roof. It will be an economic disaster for the whole world. Does the West want that? They want to fight Russia to the last Ukrainian. I think that is highly immoral. It is an unequal fight. It's very brave. I mean, I'm very impressed. But one beauty queen picking up a Kalashnikov, uh, I'm afraid is more theatrics because Kalashnikov does nothing to tanks. Please understand this. All right. So they are, uh, they, uh, any self-respecting people will try and fight for their uh, country, for their honor. But the fact of the matter is, if the fighting is already in the capital city of Kiev, it is just a matter of time. Now the point is, you want to prolong the conflict to what end? Is it in the interest of the Ukrainian people? If Russia's military aim is to destroy Ukrainian military potential, he is bringing them to battle. He is destroying that military potential. Please understand this. Don't get carried away by whatever CNN or BBC is saying. The, as per CNN, BBC, uh, Ukraine and uh, Zelensky has won the war. The fighting is taking place in the capital city of Kaim. You know, if Indian tanks reach Islamabad, you would say Pakistan has won. I mean, this is, you know, we have to be a little realistic in our understanding of the military realities. It is extremely immoral for the NATO to cheerlead Zelensky into fighting uh, the Russians to the last man, last man standing in Ukraine, to the last Ukrainian. Who will suffer? Who is suffering? Ukraine. Whose oil uh, installations are being destroyed, pipelines being destroyed? It's there. The normal Russian technique of attack, as I explained to you in Chechenia, was to surround a city, pound it with multiple multi-barrel guard rocket launchers, heavy artillery, self-propelled artillery, Su-25 frog food fighter bombers, destroy, pulverize. And before they used to do that, they would ask the population to get out. In this case, the Ukrainians are not letting the men get out. They are saying all the men will stay back to fight from 18, uh, 16 to 60. And they are saying only the women and children can go out. Right? Now, going out is also becoming difficult. Please understand there is a war on. There is a lot of, you know, hue and cry. Why aren't our citizens being brought back faster? My advice to them as a military man is, please, the safest place right now is an underground bunker. You start moving on the roads, in the trains, the Russians, the Ukrainians have no way of knowing you are Indians. You know, you can't keep, even if you carry a flag, it will not be seen by the air. You could get shot up, you could get killed. My advice is, stay safe till there is a little lull, then try and get out. Because just trying to run, I can understand. But I'm telling you as a military man how to stay safe. The, you know, we, we kiss the Mother Earth. We go underground when there is shelling, when there is bombing. We don't try and run on the roads like headless chicken. That is the surest way to get killed. 
You see, a lot of effort is being made by the Indian government to get our boys out. They were told to get out four days, five days before the war started. But everybody disbelieved. Everybody disbelieved. It's, no, it's not a problem. Even the West, even the, our own uh, old generals were fooled by the Russian Maskarovika. And uh, they thought Russia would not attack. But Russia did. Now they are trying to get them out by the land route. And uh, I saw on some channels, uh, you know, that uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there is a lot of abuse being piled upon our government, which is doing its best. Four ministers have gone to the cities, uh, to the countries surrounding Ukraine, Russia side, Poland side, Romania side, and they are trying to organize these exit. But my advice is, take it easy, unless there is a column which is organized which the Russians are told, the Ukrainians are told to let it go. Some markings are made on those, air, uh, on those uh, vehicles so that otherwise there is a war on. There is a full-scale war on. And the worst place to be is to be caught on the roads because you, you could be hit by their fighter bombers, you could be hit by their uh, attack helicopters, by their artillery, by their tanks. Tanks will shoot first, ask questions later in war. Nobody wants to die. So my advice is let the government organize your evacuation in batches which can, for which they will try and take, uh, you know, due concurrence of both the sides so that they don't accidentally hit them. I know it is frightful. I know for, uh, I have been a soldier, I have been in all these situations. My advice to you is, the safest place right now is a bunker. Safest place right now is a bunker. Wait. I don't think it is going to last very long now. It is more or less over. It is only the West which is trying to prolong the agony of Ukraine by cheerleading them to fight, by putting beauty queens to hold and pose with the Kalashnikov rifles. It's not fair. Extremely unfair to the people of Ukraine. Extremely unfair to civilians who are being put against tanks. Yes. It is just the Russian restraint that they haven't done a bloodbath. And thank God that the world cameras are there. Otherwise, the Russians are very, very brutal in their assaults. Look at the way they fought World War II. Look at the way they fought in Chechenia. Even in Afghanistan, they can be very ham-handed. We were surprised that Russian... We didn't see any evidence of mass scale Russian artillery being used, Russian... Uh, you know, uh, uh, multi-barrel rocket launchers and mass air attacks. They're just doing pinpoint strikes to avoid collateral damage. And even then the world, you know, every, even our media, every time there is a collateral damage, some civilian target hit, the only news we get is, oh, one building has been hit, civilian building, etc. If the fighting is taking place in built-up area, then the missiles, anti-tank guided missiles, machine guns are put where? in building, from where they can see the roads and streets. Yes. So at some point, they will get hit. The best way is to evacuate your population out of there. That's they right. are not letting the male population go. And they are encouraging others to stay back and fight. All that it will do is, I mean, it's very brave. I, I, I salute the bravery. But for the leadership, it is very immoral right. to press on with an unequal fight on which there will be only be destruction. Russia's military aim is destruction of Ukraine's military potential. That will happen if they bring them to battle. They bring them to battle. They are coming to battle. They are taking the bait. True. They are taking the bait. You think it is very difficult for the Russians to decapacitate the Ukrainian leadership? Today, anytime you open a mobile, you can be pinpointed where you are. You think the Russians can't send their fighter bombers with precision-guided munitions to knock out Shiri Zelensky? They haven't done it so far. They haven't done it so far for a reason. They are achieving their aim of destroying Ukrainian military potential. That was the aim. Regime change may come at the end of it, but it may be one option is that you leave Zelensky in yes. charge. After the fighting is over, the half of Ukraine has burnt to face the ire of his people. Well, that yes, nobody wants that, sir. Absolutely. Rather than getting a, 
leader being brought in on Russian tanks will That's not true. be acceptable. 